Hey guys, uh, I just want to spend uh, just a little bit of time to go over one of the writing assignments this week uh, so that you have a, a good understanding of, of what's required and um, I'll give you some ideas maybe on where you might be able to locate some of the information that might be helpful as you, you complete this assignment. Um, so in this assignment, you're going to focus on one of three uh, amendments under the Bill of Rights. So it's the fourth, sixth, or eighth amendment. Uh, and that's what you're going to be focusing on. So you're going to end up selecting just one of these to complete this assignment. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to help you as you get ready to work on uh, project one. And that's going to be coming up here in not too long from now so hopefully it'll give you some idea as to um, what's going to be needed and i think that's going to be in module five where you have to complete project one um, so again in this assignment you're going to choose either the fourth sixth or eighth amendment to the u.s constitution and explain how this amendment impacts criminal justice professionals specifically you, you'll consider one issue related to the amendment, all right? So uh, first you have to select an amendment, and then you need to watch, uh, depending on the amendment you select, uh, one of these videos that corresponds to your uh, selected amendment. So if I was gonna write about the Fourth Amendment, then I would click on uh, this video on search and seizure issues. If I was going to do due process on this one, Eighth Amendment, and so forth. All right. And so what's going to be required for this assignment? Uh, first thing you have to do is provide a summary of this uh, amendment. So in 100 to 150 words, summarize the amendment you choose. Be sure that your summary includes the following. So you need to describe and tell me all the rights given to the citizens in this particular amendment. So you're going to have to read the amendment, sort of understand what it basically says and what rights you as a citizen have benefit from this amendment. Next, you're going to have to do citizens' rights. And here you're going to identify a real-world example of where citizens' rights under the Bill of Rights may not be guaranteed. So in other words, uh, the Fourth Amendment, for example, uh, prevents unreasonable searches and seizures. And so the courts have identified those searches that are not unreasonable. In other words, your rights are not guaranteed. So for example, a search incident to a lawful arrest. The police officer does not have to have probable cause. So that's one of the exceptions to the rule. Um, exigent circumstances that require police to take immediate action uh, if the police were to see something uh, as part of that exigent, exigency, um, then that whatever they see as part of that emergency uh, would be um, admissible. For example, let's say uh, they get a call about domestic violence and they get to the door and they hear arguing inside and a woman screaming for help. Uh, they have a right to move in quickly to prevent harm to that woman. Uh, and let's say once inside, they see evidence, uh, that evidence would be admitted under the exigent, exigency. So our textbook is going to provide you with the real world examples through cases where citizens' rights under certain amendments may not be guaranteed. All right. Uh, again, if we look at the Sixth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment is your right to legal representation but as you will recall uh, in doing a live lineup at a jail um, the police do not have to notify your attorney if you haven't been officially charged with the crime yet uh, so prior to that time that you've been officially charged with the crime they are allowed to have you in a lineup and don't have to notify any legal representative so that's another example so use your textbook your textbook is going to tell you about the cases on where the law applies, but it's also going to give you circumstances under which courts have said there is no expectation of privacy or uh, whatever the case might be uh, in terms of your rights, right? 
Um, another good example for the Fourth Amendment is searching your garbage. Uh, there's no reasonable expectation of privacy for the police to search your garbage once you put it out to the curb. Uh, so that would be another real example where your rights under that particular amendment are not guaranteed. All right, so the book, look at the book, look at the cases, uh, properly reference the cases if you want, but those would serve as a good example. Next, in terms of professionals, identify three to five examples of how specific rights given to citizens in your chosen amendment might potentially restrict the actions of professionals in the criminal justice system. So again, uh, if I uh, am going to conduct a search um, and I don't have probable cause, uh, maybe I can ask consent. The citizen has the right to refuse that consent. So that would potentially restrict my actions as a professional. Um, so the, the other side of the fact that a, a defendant also has the right to have an attorney at some point, that could restrict my actions as a criminal justice professional because I just can't go talk to a person once they have an attorney. I have to work for the attorney and any smart attorney is going to tell the defendant not to talk to the police, all right? Um, so again, provide three to five examples on how the specific rights given to citizens in your chosen amendment might potentially restrict the actions of professionals in the criminal justice system. And so look at the amendment again, what is the guarantee, look at some of the cases, and you'll, you'll come up with some really good examples uh, based on um, what's already been decided by the courts. So in, in essence, you really don't have to reinvent anything. What you need to do is just understand the exceptions to the rules uh, that the law provides, uh, but also understand what the courts have said uh, criminal justice professionals cannot do. And those would be areas and examples uh, to highlight uh, how um, the rights given to citizens under these specific amendments might restrict the actions of professionals in the criminal justice system. Uh, and, and for example, the Eighth Amendment, I'll just talk about that real quick here. The Eighth Amendment, uh, let's say uh, cruel and unusual punishment, the death penalty. Uh, the big debates going on now is uh, the specific use of chemicals necessary uh, as part of the death penalty. And, and the courts have been battling with this and ruling on whether or not that's cruel and unusual punishment. But the point being that when the courts say, for example, that the use of certain chemicals is cruel and unusual punishment, uh, that restricts the act of the professional. So you have to come up with another means, an alternate means of uh, producing death, so to speak. Um, so that can be applied there. So again, uh, read your book, read the chapters uh, dealing with the, the specific amendments, get a feel for the cases on uh, where uh, the criminal justice professional was way out of bounds and then on those situations in which the court said that really the citizen has no expectation of privacy under these conditions taking out the trash for example uh, there's no expectation of privacy uh plain views another one vehicle searches uh discarding evidence okay once you throw something out the window of your car there's no expectation of privacy so if the police pull you over and you throw something out of your car let's say a pack of cigarettes and the officer uh, goes out and picks up the pack of cigarettes and finds narcotics in there, then there's no expectation of privacy and you can be arrested for that. And there's not gonna be an issue of search and seizure. So again, go back and look at some of the great examples within the textbook and, and you'll be just fine with that regard, okay? Uh, so again, specifically, you need to summarize the fourth, fifth or sixth or eighth amendment, the fourth, sixth or eighth amendment. So you need to provide a summary. Um, in terms of what, what what does it specifically guarantee. Explain a real world example where citizens' rights could conflict with the intention of criminal justice professionals to ensure safety. So give me an example. Um, and again, go back and look at the cases and you'll find answers to these. So go back to your textbook. Um, and describe three to five examples of how the rights given to citizens might restrict the actions of professionals in the criminal justice system. In other words, our ability to investigate crime, to solve crime, things like that. So, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to talk to you as a citizen, uh, you have a right to an attorney if you're under arrest. Okay. Um, 
those type of things, uh, you, you find the answers deep in our textbook, right? So there's a lot of information there. So take your time, uh, use some of those cases as, as your examples. You can cite the case. Uh, it'll clearly show uh, where uh, your rights uh, are guaranteed and in cases where your rights aren't so guaranteed, okay, based on some of the case law. Uh, and then you're going to be using um, the template. And let me get the template here. Here it is. Uh, hold on, it's not this one. Okay, then you're going to be using this template to do your response. So uh, follow the guidelines again, 100 to 150 words. So you're going to choose the amendment or the choose the amendment that you selected. Uh, summary, you're going to summarize the amendment you choose. Uh, be, sh be sure your summary includes all the rights given to citizens in that particular amendment. So you're familiar with what rights are in, you're entitled to. So basically, if, if someone had explained to you, or if you had to explain to somebody what rights do I have as a citizen of this country regarding search and seizure, you would be able to cite for them some of the rights specific to the Fourth Amendment, for example. Uh, citizens' rights, again, identify a real-world example of where citizens' rights under the Bill of Rights may not be guaranteed. So this is a real-world example. So again, you can use your textbook. Maybe you're familiar with something you've read recently in your newspaper about a, a hometown case or something like that that applies to whatever amendment you select. But again, identify a real-world example. Uh, again, your textbook is ripe with examples that might be applicable here. And then professionals identify three to five examples of how the specific rights given to citizens in your chosen amendment might potentially restrict the actions of professionals in the criminal justice system. Uh, and that could be not only police, but obviously uh, a prosecutor, okay? If um, you decide, and I'm just gonna take the Fifth Amendment because we're not talking about it, but if you, you decide to um, you know, take advantage of your Miranda warnings, then the prosecutor is not going to have any type of admission or confession on your part. So that may stymie his ability to proceed forward with the case. Uh, same thing if evidence, for example, uh, that the court uh, deems has been seized improperly, so he's not going to be able to uh, use it in court because of the exclusionary rule, then that's going to impede his or her ability to, to prosecute the case. And so those are some issues that both the uh, the prosecutor and law enforcement and the courts need to determine. Um, but then, again, here it is. Uh, just use this template, and I think it'll work uh, pretty easy that way. All right, so again, uh, use your textbook. Your textbook's going to have a good uh, level of resource for you as you work on this assignment. All right, I think that's it, guys. Uh, other than that, have a great week, and I look forward to reading your work. Bye.